you can integrate your Android widgets with Assistant to enable users to receive quick answers and interactive app experiences on Assistant-enabled services like Android and Android Auto. Let's see how widgets work within App Actions, how Assistant can use them, and highlight the steps needed to make an existing widget to be accessible to Google Assistant. Since App Actions is needed to integrate widgets with Assistant, let's start there. App Actions is how you can integrate Google Assistant into your Android app, and is how end users can launch and control Android apps with their voice. So when a user says, hey Google, order a pizza from example app, Assistant will process the user's input with natural language understanding, matching the requests to either a built-in intent or a custom intent, like order menu item built-in intent. It also does entity extractions to pull out supported parameters, like getting the parameter menu item name from the user's input, which in this case is pizza. Check out our reference docs for the full list of all our supported built-in intents. Assistant opens the Android app, passing the data extracted from the user's voice request and opens a screen that starts a pizza order. That though is great for starting a pizza order, but I know that when I'm hungry and I'm waiting for my food, I want to know the status of my order quickly. I don't want to wait for a whole app to open just to find out about my order. So when I say, hey Google, check my pizza order on example app, Assistant will process the input, match it to the get order built-in intent, and extracts pizza from the input for the ordered item name parameter. Since the app has been configured to return a widget for this intent, my order status is displayed within the Assistant. No need to load the entire app just to give me a quick update. The widget is then displayed within the Assistant UI. Assistant can also provide a spoken response to go along with the widget, if you want it provided by the widget. We'll revisit this text-to-speech feature later when we go over steps needed to integrate an existing widget to Assistant. Widgets can be invoked by the Assistant in two ways. The first is just what we did where the user asks for information that triggers a built-in intent or custom intent. The widget is displayed within the Assistant UI. The second is when a user directly requests the app's widget. So users can say, hey Google, show example app widget. By integrating your widgets to Assistant, users will be able to discover your widgets since they'll be displayed within the Assistant UI with a chip so users can add the widget to their home screen. In situations when the user hasn't unlocked the device or with Android Auto, widgets can still be serviced as a result of a query. Now let's dive into how to integrate your Android widgets to Assistant. Any existing widget can be configured for Assistant widget fulfillment. If you don't have one already, let's go over a few key concepts of implementing an Android widget. Widgets are a great way for users to quickly monitor information, complete tasks, or be inspired by their home screens. You can think of them as at a glance view of apps, most important data and functionality that is accessible right from the user's home screen. Widgets need elements like app widget provider to define the widget's behavior and the app widget provider info for its metadata. And finally, the broadcast receiver to allow for triggering of the widget. After implementing a widget, you'll create or modify an app actions capability by adding an app widget tag. Let's use the prior example of checking the status of my pizza order. Here is an example of a get order capability with the app widget tag. This built-in intent contains parameters which are pulled from the user's query. For example, check my pizza order on example app will pull pizza as the value for the parameter called name. This data will be sent as extras via the Android intent. Also included in the intent extras is the has TTS configuration, which allows you to include custom introductions for your widgets. By saying to true, it is letting assistant know that the widget will have text to read using text to speech function and displaying on the screen. We have some best practices for text to speech later in this video. There are many times when the user might not provide the value of the parameter. Like, for example, hey Google, check my order on example app. So we'll need to include a fallback intent. A fallback intent requires no parameters. You could think of it as the else in a conditional statement. Fallbacks are needed whenever you have a parameter in your app widget. Here's an example of a fallback intent for this capability. 
It only contains the information on constructing your Android intent. Now that the capability is updated, the Android widget needs to be modified. It'll first need to extract the built-in intent name and its parameters to construct the widget for the assistant to use. This is done by adding the widget extension library and then extracting the information. Add the library to the dependency section of build.gradle. Here's an example of a class that extracts the built-in intent name and parameter from the widget options bundle. It's importing the app actions widget extension class. Here we're accessing the data that was sent via the Android intent as extras. In this example, we are using bundles and the app actions widget extension to pull the built-in intent name and its parameters. Then you could use that data to construct the UI of the widget. Next is to add the text-to-speech to the widget. Here's a continuation of the previous example, where it is setting the speech and text strings. This is the text-to-speech that was mentioned before in the capability configuration. The speech string will be played to the user and the text string will be displayed as text in the assistant UI. You may want to use two different strings due to the differences between written and spoken language. For example, you might want to include the order number in the text to be displayed, but in the text to speech should just refer to the order as your order. You'll update the widget with the text to present, then update the widget UI. By doing this, the SDK automatically enables the launcher pinning, adding the add this widget chip to the response. Going back to the text to speech feature that enables assistant to speak the response along with the widget, we have some style recommendations. The first recommendation is using simple and plain language because it has the broadest appeal, making it accessible to people of all backgrounds. Here's an example of a speech containing the phrase, your order has been delivered. With the display text, the phrase contains, your order 43512 has been delivered. In situations where the number of the order isn't important or relevant, the speech phrase can omit this. Use contractions in your speech. Words like cannot and do not can sound punishing and harsh. This example speech contains the phrase, accounts doesn't exist, while its text contains, account does not exist. Use serial comma in a list of three or more items. Without the serial comma, individual items in your list can be incorrectly heard or misinterpreted as groups. For example, your last orders were of yellow roses, daffodils, daisies, and sunflowers. Daisies and sunflowers sound kind of like they come together, while daisies and sunflowers are clearly separated. Use numerals instead of text. Numerals make visual content more glanceable. Similar to numerals, use symbols like a currency sign instead of using text for glanceability. So instead of using the word dollar, use the dollar sign. Now a few things to avoid, like niceties. Niceties makes response feel distant and formal. Ditch them and keep the tone friendly and informal. In this example, by removing, sure I could tell you that, it keeps the content plain and simple. Finally, avoid exclamation points. They can be perceived as shouting. Widgets can be used as fulfillment to a user's query. They are ideal for simple answers or brief confirmations. Since they're displayed within the Assistant UI, it can help users with discovering your widgets. SDK automatically enables the launcher pinning so users will see the Add This Widget button, letting them add it to their home screen. And during hands-free contacts, widgets can be surfaced on lock screens and Android Auto. To learn more about app actions, check out our docs, collabs, and videos. Join our developer community on Reddit, where you chat with other app actions developers, and stay up to date by following us on Twitter. I'm Jessica, thanks for watching, and I can't wait to see what you built.